This is Subpixel with a report from the fringes of color science. Well, a report about colors and blend modes, especially with alpha channel transparency in Resolum. Here we're talking about Resolum Arena. My version is 7.13.2. So just to describe what's going on in my panels here, I have the composition with just some text over it for identification. And my layers, I've got layer one, I've either got solid black or nothing. And if we add the solid black, we can see that indeed the background becomes solid black. So I'll just leave that off for the moment. And I want to identify an error in the color picker device, this little thing here. So if we set this to 255 or white, and we try to pick this color, it shows as only 254. And in fact, if we try to pick from the color that's there, as we continue to pick, the values decrease. And you can see them going down by one. And if it gets to 127, for whatever reason, it stops there and it's safe. So if I have just red and green and no blue. Again, I can pick and the red and green go down while the blue stays still. If I bring the blue up, well, let's say to 100, and I go click on this, we see the red and green come down while the blue stays still. We'll also note that if you try to pick a fractional value for the red, green, and blue, you can't actually have a fraction of a red, green, or blue in the output when it's 8-bit. So if I try to choose that, it's going to go not only decrease this a little bit, but it's going to make them round. So round numbers, again, decreasing, but only to the point where they get to 127. That out of the way, we can now do some tests. I've got this little clip here of a frog which has got, if we look at the preview, a nice transparent background and the frog in the foreground. And for my composition, I'm gonna zoom in just so we can look at some details. I've got this bright red clip here, which is full red, full strength red, 255 and 100% alpha. And if I activate that clip or launch that clip and bring it in, uh, let's look at the composition. So transparent background, bring in the red, and we can see we get a result of red. And we'll just check to see what color this is. And this says 254, actually 255, accounting for that error. So that's fine. We've got red, and let's activate the frog clip. We'll launch the frog clip. And as we bring this in, just watch this area here. It goes from bright red to less bright. No, it doesn't. I've tricked myself. I think the trick was, ah, oh, yes. Okay, in a previous iteration of this video, I mistakenly had my layer two had the layer master was set at less than 100% and that introduced some artifacts. So, Layer two at less than 100% opacity. So the color, if we look at it, it's 221 in this case, instead of 255 or 254 reported by this color picker. So layer three, if we add in the frog, if we watch this area here, instead of just staying at this fairly bright, but not fully bright red, as I bring in the frog, it decreases in brightness. So you can see the frog is being added and the, the whole area is still transparent, but it seems that it's either becoming more transparent or the red is becoming less bright. Uh, it's hard to tell from a preview because it doesn't actually report what the red, green, blue, and alpha actually is. But I'm gonna guess that it's actually becoming slightly more transparent, which is why the, the red becomes reduced in, 
intensity. So again, looking at that top left hand corner, bright red, less bright, bright red, less bright. If I use the bypass switch, you can see the change is very obvious. So that out of the way, let's have a look at adding red and blue. Full red, bright red, and full blue, bright blue. We can see the background goes from transparent to opaque, not a problem. If we switch the red and blue around, uh, we, we've got the blue is on the top instead of the red or vice versa. So what we want to know first of all is what happens when you add red and blue. So we have red, we add blue, and we get magenta, which is expected. If we just test it, we can see essentially full red and blue, so it's full magenta. And if we switch, so that's red plus blue. If we do instead blue plus red, we get the same result. And just check a picker. Again, full magenta. This next column I've got here is red, dark red. So it's only half strength red, still 100% alpha. And the blue is half strength blue or dark blue, still with 100% alpha. So we've got red, so we can see down here it's fully opaque. It's just not as bright as the previous one. And we've got blue, which is again fully opaque, just not as bright. So what color is red plus blue? Red plus blue is magenta, and we'll check the color. And we've got 127, full strength, or half brightness magenta, but it's pure. And alpha again, we can't test. So red plus blue is magenta, and if we try it the other way around, let's put, sorry, here, dark blue and dark red. is magenta. So column five and column four, they're the same. If we look at this here, this dark red, dark red output result can also be achieved by saying fully bright red, but with 50% alpha value. So if I go from this dark red, which is 127 red, full alpha, to a transparent red, which is 255 red and 50% alpha, we can see that the output looks the same, but the preview with the transparency shown shows that one of them is semi-transparent and the other is not. So explaining that difference, it's like, okay, that's fine. What happens if we add transparent blue to transparent red? So we can see the transparent blue and we can see the transparent red. And if we add the blue to the red, we get a transparent magenta. But if we look at the color of the magenta, the result, it's not pure. We've got red is a lot less than blue. And worse than that, if we start with transparent blue, well, we've got transparent red here again. We've got transparent blue. But if we add the red to the blue, we again get magenta. So remember the previous one was low on red and high on blue. If we check the current, this color, we've got high red and low blue. So we've got these exact two exact same colors being used in the opposite order with the same blend mode. And we get two different colors of magenta or two different impure magentas. So 
interestingly, the order of adding seems to matter. And remember, we were going onto a transparent background before. What happens if we add black? Still the same. Whereas if we have in column one, uh, solid black and bright red, we can add it, not a problem. Doesn't make any difference except that it's transparent, the black is already there. But if we look at, say, a transparent red, transparent red displaying, let's add solid black. So we can see the transparency <coughs> goes from not, not fully opaque to opaque. But we can also see that the brightness of the result, in terms of the red at least, goes from kind of dark red through to even darker red and then back to dark red. So we can see there's a, a dip in between. So adding transparent red to transparent black depends on how strong the transparent black is. So I've got some other tests over here. We've got the frog and this other machine thing. And, and again, I've just got the zoom in so that we can see the difference. Oh, geez, I didn't notice that A was hit there. How long has that been on for? In any case, red, uh, frog on machine, uh, machine on frog versus frog on machine. When the full, bright, uh, full transparency, it's not a problem. I'm just going to copy this row here to the bottom and what I can do is just reactivate this column trigger and I've got a, a keyboard shortcut set so that I can switch the bypass between these top and bottom. So effectively, we've got either the frog onto the machine or the machine onto the frog. We can flip it. Oh, let's turn the brightness, the brightness up. So they're the same. But if we change the order of operations, Let's say we've got a slightly less intense frog. Suddenly, the order of, operate, of adding the machine before or after makes a difference. And if instead of having a sort of a half brightness frog, let's have the machine is at half brightness. And again, if we flip whether we add this is the frog plus the machine, or we flip it and we've got the machine plus the frog, we can see the results different. We can have this, uh, let's just zoom out the composition so we can see everything. What's happened to my man? Where is he?
I don't know what I've done. <laughs> Something very strange is happening here. I cannot explain what has happened. Preview of the robot is not appearing in the composition. The layer, the master is on. Oh wait, here we are. Ah, oh, wait. The transform also has a position in it. Here we go. Reset the transform. Right. So, machine plus frog, and I'm just going to pause it. Machine plus frog. So machine added to the oh machine plus the frog versus frog plus machine. So we can see in the details here that there's definitely something going on. If we go to a 50% machine, again when we flip we can see there's a difference. Go to the the man and the strange animation bubble stuff. Again, we can see there's a difference between adding before or after. And the man at 50%, let's bring it up a little bit. Again, there's a difference between the two. Here we've got a, a an item that's got dark things. So this black here, which is not transparent, it's actually like a darker part of this machine, which moves around. It's like some sort of architecture. And adding the frog, if it's full before or after, it doesn't make a difference. But if I reduce the intensity, let's make it different. We can see there is some kind of difference there between the two. And similarly, if we do it the other way around. Make the machine intense, but not full intense. When we switch the order of operations of adding the frog before or after, it's different. So, I don't know exactly know what 50 add mode is doing. It, the order matters, and it seems that adding transparent black to a full strength color makes the color dimmer, which doesn't sound like an addition operation to me. I'm trying to develop an alternate blend mode for addition that doesn't have these strange anomalies. And so that if you do X plus Y, it's the same as Y plus X. Anyhow, this is Subpixel signing off from the edge.